Hello, it's time for French politics here on France 24. I'm Mark Perlman. And I'm Molly Hall. Coming up in today's show, the conservative Republican Party has a new leader. But less than a week on the job, and Laurent Vauquier is scrambling to keep the opposition party united. In the meantime, President Emmanuel Macron positions himself as the world leader on climate change as Paris holds the One Planet Summit. Plus, Marine Le Pen's National Front Party is put under formal investigation over a fake European Parliament job scandal. That's up next on The Political Brief. France's conservative opposition party, Les Républicains, has a new leader. Laurent Vauquier easily beat two little-known rivals, winning 75% of the votes cast by close to 100,000 party members. But he faces a tough task to rebuild the once powerful conservative party, and his hardline stance isn't making it any easier. Selena Sykes has the details. He's got the job previously held by Nicolas Sarkozy. 42-year-old Laurent Vauquier is the new leader of the centre-right Les Républicains. He announced the party's comeback after months of crisis. You sent a message which was very clear. Tonight we can say the right is back. A right that will live up to its values, a party at peace with itself that no longer hides behind denial. His election points to a shift further to the right. Vauquier campaigned on an anti-immigration, anti-welfare platform. He's also a vocal critic of French President Emmanuel Macron. In the second round of this year's presidential election, he refused to call on Républicain supporters to back Macron against the leader of the National Front, Marine Le Pen. His first task is to reunite his bitterly divided party who suffered a disastrous defeat under François Fillon. The Républicain lost 93 seats in the National Assembly during this year's legislative elections. Moderate party members have already warned they could leave if Vauquier does not water down his hardline views. And opinion polls put him behind far-left leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon and Marine Le Pen. So Laurent Vauquier is now at the helm of Les Républicains, but not everyone thinks he's the man who can unite the Conservative Party. A poll put out this week shows 55% of party members say he's up to the task, while well, that number falls to just 29% for non-party members. Well, Molly, as the numbers show, Laurent Vauquier is clearly facing an uphill battle. Several party heavyweights have hinted they might leave the party and one of them actually did so. Former minister Xavier Bertrand, who heads the northern Pas-de-Calais region, called it quits just 24 hours after the election of Vauquier, saying he couldn't belong to a party led by someone who refused to endorse Emmanuel Macron against far-right leader Marine Le Pen in the runoff of the presidential election last May. I have decided to once and for all leave the Républicain Party. This was not an easy decision, but one which was forced upon me. I had already taken a step back when my political family didn't stand clearly with Emmanuel Macron to block the far right. In the meantime, France hosted this week the One Planet Summit. The conference brought together world and business leaders to address the urgent need for climate action. Well, it was held two years to the day after the historic Paris Agreement. France announced a raft of some 12 non-binding commitments from a $300 million pledge to fight desertification to accelerating the transition towards a decarbonized economy. But the French president gave a bleak assessment on the current global fight against climate change. We're losing the battle. Make no mistake. We're having a good time. It's nice to meet you and today's a great day because like-minded people are together or are getting to know one another. And that seems great, but we're losing the battle. Those before us had an opportunity but didn't know as much as we know now. But over the past 20 years, we've come to know more and more. 
President Macron used the summit to seize the global spotlight and position himself as the world's moral compass on climate change. But that always hasn't been the case. And for more on that, I'm joined here in the studio by France 24's Flo Vilmino. So Flo, walk us through. What have we seen? Well, during the presidential campaign, Macron actually drew a lot of criticism for putting the environment at the bottom of his priority list after economic, social and security issues. Well, since his election, he's really been trying to turn that around and present himself as a leader on environmental issues, Mr. Green, uh, if you will. Uh, and from the get-go, he actually marked a lot of points by naming Nicolas Hulot as his Minister of Ecology and Solidarity. Now, you've got to know that Nicolas Hulot is very popular here in France. He hosted a hit TV show in the 80s and the 90s called Ushuaia. You can see some footage there. Uh, and in poll after poll, he's been named uh, one of France's favorite politicians. And it was a big win for him to say yes to Macron because Hulot had actually been courted by previous presidents, Jacques Chirac, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, François Hollande, and he had refused every time. So the fact that he said yes to Macron seemed to be a sign uh, that the government was really committed to the environment. And it also seemed to be a guarantee of quality policies to come. Well, in the meantime, Emmanuel Macron also benefited from a change in world politics. The U.S. used to be the leader uh, when it came to fighting climate change. That's not the case anymore since we have someone new in the White House. Indeed, the climate skeptic in chief, as Donald Trump is often called, he, he made good on his campaign pledge to pull the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, this was a slap in the face for France, which hosted the COP21, but it was also a blessing in disguise for Macron, who really jumped right into the vacuum left by Donald Trump and actually even borrowed a page from Trump's book. Just hours after Trump announced that the U.S. was leaving the Paris uh, Climate Summit, uh, this was on June 1st, Macron tweeted this, make our planet great again. So that, of course, is a direct reference to Trump's campaign slogan, Make America Great Again. And this catchy tweet really worked for Macron. Actually, it became the most retweeted tweet in French Twitter history. Uh, and it went on to become kind of a, a catchphrase for uh, the French president, uh, something that he used at the recent One, uh, One Planet uh, Summit. This was uh, something that we saw a lot there. Remember, Trump wasn't invited to this summit. Uh, Macron, however, did mention Trump in an interview with CBS. The U.S. is a great government, is a great country. The U.S. did sign the Paris Agreement. It's extremely aggressive to decide on its own just to leave. And no way to push the others to renegotiate because one decided to leave the, the floor. I'm sorry to say that. It doesn't fly. So, sorry, but I think it's a big responsibility in front of the history. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that my friend, President Trump, will change his mind in the coming month or years. I do hope. You think he'll change his mind? Yes. I mean, my, I'm not ready to renegotiate, but I'm, I'm ready to welcome him if he decides to come back. So you can see Macron there trying to take the lead on environmental issues, showing just how woke or aware he is about uh, climate change compared to Donald Trump. But a lot of environmental NGOs aren't buying it at all. They say that this is just a bunch of hot air from the French president. Essentially, he's checking all the right PR boxes, but he's not actually walking the walk when it comes to policy. For instance, uh, he's not going to wean France off nuclear energy or massively invest in alternative uh, renewable energy like wind and wind power, etc. Uh, and Instead, critics say that he's just reheating a bunch of old consensual ideas. And some have actually gone so far as to accuse the French president of greenwashing. This is essentially giving himself an eco-responsible image, but hiding the truth of his policies. All right, Flo, thank you very much for that. Well, now we're going to cross to Corsica. This is where the Nationalist Alliance has won a majority in regional parliament. These are the results of Sunday's elections on the French Mediterranean island. In a historical win, the coalition of autonomists and nationalists won 56% of the vote. That's right. And the party's short-term goals include equal recognition for the Corsican language, amnesty for convicts they see as political prisoners, and finally, recognition of a special Corsican residency status. The party leaders stress, however, that the demand for autonomy is not a demand for independence, at least for now. Ultimately, it's up to Paris to evaluate what's happening in Corsica, which is something profound. So yes, the ball is largely in Paris's court, and more precisely, certainly in the French president's court. 
Well, next, the National Front Party has been put under formal investigation over misuse of EU funds. This means both Marine Le Pen and her party stand accused of giving members fake jobs as assistants at the European Parliament. France 24's Rodaba Abbas explains. More troubles for France's Front National. The far-right party has been placed under formal investigation for allegedly abusing EU funds. It's accused of using millions of euros earmarked for EU parliamentary assistance to pay for its France-based interests instead. That's five months after its leader Marine Le Pen was placed under formal investigation, along with 17 other party members, for charges she denies. A spokesperson for the Front National told local media that the party refuses to accept the unfounded judicial proceedings and that it, quote, did not embezzle a penny. This comes after France's second largest bank, Société Générale, ended its 30-year relationship with the party and closed its accounts. Marine Le Pen's presence on the national political stage has diminished since she lost to Emmanuel Macron in May's presidential election. This brings us to the end of the program for this week. Indeed, we'll see you again next time on The Political Brief. We leave you now with images from this week's One Planet Summit. For 10 years, our observers have been bringing you stories from all over the world. Eu sou Guilherme Pimentel, falo aqui do Rio de Janeiro, do Brasil. Para nós foi muito importante ter feito uma parceria com os observadores, porque isso aumentou muito a nossa motivação de trabalho e também a nossa segurança. E é por isso que a gente quer continuar fazendo coisas junto com os observadores. Feliz aniversário, parabéns pelos 10 anos dos observadores da França 24. Join the observers. The Observers. Film. Verify. Share.